Well, buckle up, buttercups, because this vulnerable is truly a fun one. I get to just hang out with my bestie, Lauren Frost, who played Ruby on Even Stevens. Um, And we really just love each other so much. And I think this is one of the looser interviews that I've done. But there's a lot you can learn about us and um, truly like what we went through when we grew up during Even Stevens. So this is really one of my favorite episodes. I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Vulnerable. I remember being distinctly different from growing up in the theater was how raunchy the humor was in in our kids' programming sets. Okay. The humor started to get raunchier and raunchier the, yeah. older, the more teenage we got. Yeah. I think like the crew definitely was tight-lipped, I think like the first season or whatever. But as the years went by and they knew us, and of course Shia's humor was yeah, that, yeah. just gross. All over the place. <laughs> it was all over the place. <laughs> yeah. And it was like we were all in puberty. And so they mm-hmm. kind of wanted to, to like, I think they probably wanted to ease us having to work long hours and just right. like make us smile and laugh. And so things were said, you yeah. know? Yeah. Not to us directly, but like, you know, jokes were said right. and puns were intended. And and I feel like I was like such a goody goody because I was like fresh here from Illinois, like <laughs> plucked onto this TV show. And then I was like, oh, my ears. <laughs> like, so you distinctly remember being like, oh, this is different. Yeah, it was definitely different <laughs> and different than coming from a theater background, as you're saying. Like, yeah, just Dude, different. I'm still putting the pieces together. Yeah. Like I just finished, I, I've been mentioning this, but I just finished Annette McCurdy's book and it blew my freaking mind. Right. Obviously, she she has her own unique story with like tons of trauma, mm-hmm. and, you know, eating disorders, and I mean, it just goes on and on. Yeah. And um, my heart is is so torn in half for her. Mm-hmm. Um, our experience, I'm I'm thinking was was vastly different. Right. I'm starting to feel like Disney was actually uh, not such a bad place. <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, I'm actually like coming around to be like, wow, no, like they actually gave a shit about our well-being because they knew that if we didn't show up to set, like that would not be okay. Right. Like the the, the, the workflow would stop. The They just cared. More. Mm-hmm. Just in general, I love all the work that you're doing within like the child actor space. Like it's, it's I really commend you. Thank um, you. And I don't know, for whatever it's worth, like it's been from your friend, for years and from afar, everything that you've been doing with this little empire that you've built is so impressive. And I've enjoyed watching you grow through it all. So, I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Well, I think like, I, I'm really curious too, not not to make this about me, I apologize, but- It's okay, I made it about you. We're also you go. gonna make it about you too, okay, very soon, I promise. <laughs> but this will, this, I, because we are close in a way that like is almost inexplicable, um, mm-hmm. Well, we're trauma bonded. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> to a degree, yeah. Uh-huh. Especially like having our little like teen hearts broken by like the same boy. Yeah. Eric Youngman. Ugh. <laughs> he broke He's our hearts. He's still out there. He's still out He's there. He's still on out Facebook. there. What do the kids say? Putting out the riz. <laughs> Putting on the ritz. Is he really? He, I'm sure. He's oh my God. we've talked about this. He was like so charismatic. Oh and my God. Hip. So nerdy. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think of like who like they didn't okay. By rights, yeah. Eric Youngman should not have been <laughs> as hot as he was. I know, but it was the vintage T-shirts. He had a vintage, like, what was that? A he, Firebird oh, or yeah, Pontiac? Yeah, he had a vintage car. It was that vintage car that made really he, crazy like, noises. He, like, the Strokes or something cool. Oh, yeah. He was totally like, Adrian. what's not Adrian Brody? Who's the kid from OC? Oh, sure. Uh, what's his face? The kid. Yeah. The, Is it Adrian? No. He's now with uh, Rachel Brody Bilson, something. right? Brody something. Or something Brody. Yeah. Okay, that guy. The nerdy cute kid. He was like yeah. that skinny, nerdy, cute kid. He had that thing. He had that thing. Yeah. And I'm sure he still does. You know, I think he's writing now or something. For sure. Yeah. He's on Facebook. Yeah. Lovely guy. Yeah. But the funny, funny thing is, is like, we just, we really were hitting it from a very similar place of like, we were in this little theater bubble. Right. And we were experiencing that whole Disney mm-hmm. fame. Because I didn't even, I think I was in shock until you came. Really? I think right around you. Yeah, because remember, Ren didn't have the same best friend until you came. Right, that's true. And so, like, I almost didn't remember a time before you. There was— When we started talking— That's so sweet. (laughs) Like, socially, like, I really don't. Like, I don't know what I was doing before you, but I remember hanging out with you. Yeah. um, And and just the fun that I started to have. Right. Well, 
I feel like we might have touched on this before, but it it, it was like we were very comfortable with one another, mm-hmm. we're very familiar. Like I think we both come from, like you said, the theater background, but also like you're East Coast, I'm Chicago. We both had like, accents. Yeah, we both had the that experience, right? Of like yeah. coming to LA and yeah. like being fresh and people making fun of the way that we talked. And, oh yeah. Well, people um, were really like East Coast, West Coast back then. Right, totally. It was like a whole thing. And like Shia and AJ, and even Margo to some degree, they were uh-huh. very West Coast. So cool. And they were so cool. Yeah. Yeah, they I was were just like to hot topic up. and stuff, you know? Yeah. Like they we didn't were, wear hot topic. Yeah, we too were cool like, for school. We were like, what was it? Charlotte Russe. I was probably like rocking some Abercrombie. Oh, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Every single piece of my wardrobe by the end of Even Stevens, because I could afford it finally, right. was Abercrombie. Yeah. It was obnoxious. Yeah. It was bad. You had your little style back then. You think? But it was very like collegiate. Tom- it was? Uh-huh. I it was like so. tomboyish. Yeah. At- Tomboy collegiate. Well, that's what ended up happening was I became like very, almost like what the kids call kind of mask, but uh-huh. like slutty mask. So like yeah. I would be like like tomboyish, but like really tight Frankie B's. Do you remember Frankie yeah, B's? Yeah, dude, those are back. No, like please, the no. whole thing is back. I've had two children. Can we? I not? know. Well, we are vintage now. Oh, we are. <laughs> fuck <laughs> me. That's okay. Aging like a fine wine. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, I <sighs> think I have a memory of you in like a like a tight turtleneck. But maybe showing some midriff, you know? Yes. Like, that's what I think you're talking about. It's like, yes. I'm smart, but I also get down. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yo, swingers. I passed yeah. swingers on the way over here. Oh, Yo, we yeah. had a lot of swingers night, right? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, for those of you listening and watching, <laughs> we're not talking about swinging. Oh, not that kind of swinging. Okay. Hi, yi 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 We Whoa. can get canceled for anything. I'm going to be a meme. Okay. Um, no, it was uh, a restaurant in town. Still is. Still is, it's yeah. It's still here. There's one in Santa Monica. Yeah. There's one right, right down the street in West But Hollywood. it's open 24 hours, which is why we would go there because, like, you know, we would, like, do our share of partying or whatever. But, right. But we were still underage, right? Right. Or, so we were you'd go hang we out and— eat pancakes. It was like a was cool, being cool. It was a cool uh, 24 hour diner. Yeah. That a lot of celebrities would go to. Right. Probably. It's kind of a place to be seen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's How like bizarre. W- remember it was like City Walk. Yeah. Wait. For sure. So let's go back to this. Were you there the night that I was at City Walk when I met Sam Levine? I believe so. I think you were. Eric Young was you there. And you were just like <laughs> heart eyes. Shut up. Really? I think Wait, so. Wait, we live this with me. I, well, this is my first boyfriend, Sam Levine. Yeah, and he was very sweet to you, and he you was. were loving every moment. I tore moment. his freaking heart out of his chest. Did and you? Ripped it up and stomped on it. I'm sorry. And then he probably he probably hates me for life, but well, he's married and yeah, he's moved on. He's okay. Of course he has. You're okay too. Yeah. Um, Trees have like grown from uh, a seed form to a full tree, <laughs> and probably been chopped down and made right. into paper. Yes. But in, in the time, time that, yeah, yeah. He's healed, probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's had some time. This is the um, best part about being like almost 40 is that yeah. you can like talk about things, but with like such an ironic distance. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was uh, telling you earlier that I came across a box of photos <sighs> and made a TikTok out of it, but some of those photos were of your birthday party. Oh, God. Your sushi dinner birthday party. <laughs> My and 19th, he, right? And he's in those photos. Yeah. I felt really close to Shia that day. You did? I did because he came. And, okay. you know, we were rounding out, you know, we were rounding down our our show at yeah. that point, I think. If I had turned 18, um, I think it was my 18th birthday. Yeah. And my only family, because I was really not super close to my own family, um, kind of displaced that way, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. so— my only family really started to feel like it was that even Steven's family. Um, I feel that. Right? I actually do. And again, because I had moved here for the show and all of that. like You felt it was, displaced too? Absolutely, yeah. You have other siblings, right? No, it's just me. Oh, I thought you had a brother or something. No, but but only child. my friends in general have always been like family to me. So, so and being on that show for as long as we were, like, it, it did feel that way. Yeah. It was our social life. It was our high school, but it was also our job. So. Right those lines get blurred, right? Dude, so, formative years are a lot longer than people realize. Yeah. So like when people are like, oh, you know, it was just like three years of your life, like get over it. It's like, 
well, no, this is like, this is our childhood. And right. how many people have this experience? And it's Not a lot. And a lot of people want to hear about it. That's the other thing. It's like, right. I'll stop making nostalgic content when, when people, people stop, stop giving hearing. a shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And some days you want to talk about it and others you're not in the space to, you That's know? True. Um, That's true. And going back to what you said, your formative years, like our brains were still developing. We were, you know, yeah. and we were learning to navigate just like being teenagers and all of that angst. <laughs> while being on a television show, you know? It wasn't as bad as I feel like some folks had it. When I look back, I feel like, you know, I, we were stuck in Marina Del Rey, yeah. first of all. And like, it was very rare that we would be down into like the whole Oakwood vibe. But where did you live? Were you in the Valley? So when I first came to LA, I stayed at Oakwood. That was my <laughs> first crash course. Uh, Can you please explain to people yeah. what Oakwood, Oakwood, now called Ava, is. Yes. They rebranded oh, it. Yeah, yeah. Every time I pass it, I, know, I get like goosebumps. Um, yeah, it was like a place that kid actors would come and stay and live because it was furnished and it was like short term rentals and it became this little like Melrose place for actor kids um, and all their stage parents. So uh, it was a bubble. Uh, and yeah, after I booked Even Stevens, it got me out of that bubble, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My mom and I bounced around quite a bit, though, before uh, the Disney thing happened. But did you just come to L.A. after the Barbra Streisand tour? Yeah. I came out here for a pilot season the summer I turned 13, like before high school, and just to try it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to audition. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, it's pilot season. Did you tell your mom you wanted to do it? Or? Oh, yeah. I, I Yeah, I so wanted to do it. you were always the person that was like, mom, I want to be in theater. I want, yeah, I wanted to be an actor. I just. You had a big voice too. You still do. I love to sing. Oh, um, beautiful And voice. I was just a general ham, you know, like yeah. I'm a big SNL girl. Like I love comedy. Molly Shannon was an idol of mine. I was Mary yeah. Catherine Gallagher for Halloween. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anywho. Wait, this Halloween you were? Oh, God, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. When yeah. I was a kid, like, it was just SNL, a, yeah. Fun. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I was just, like, watching TV one day, and it was, Full House was on, and I was like, oh, they're, they're kids. They're on TV. Like, I just had it in my head. You had to be an adult to be an actor or, like, right. to choose your profession. I didn't think, I thought I'd have to go through the traditional steps of like high school, college, and then I could be an actor. But seeing other kids on TV, I was like, I want to try that. Mm -hmm. So I begged my parents. And really the only reason I think they were able to make that happen for me was because I'm an only child, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, it's not an easy sacrifice to make. Yeah. Um, my mom took a leave of absence from her job. Uh, once I started booking, you know, for the summer, it was just like, let's just give this a shot. Mm -hmm. And they were very uh, supportive and healthy around it. Like, as long as it's still fun, you know, that was always their thing. But see, here's the thing about that. That's a trap that a lot of stage parents fall into that I want to ward people away from most uh -huh. of the time. In Lauren's case, I believe it to be true. <laughs> My mom definitely said that to me. And over time, it lost its meaning. Okay. Because I think things got so complex that a lot of stage parents think it's fun when it stops being more you know, it stops being fun and it's more about the business side of stuff. Right. And it's, and it's, you know, strategic moves and like comparative stuff. And right. It's, it's just, it's inherently, it, that must be a very hard thing for the stage parent. Yeah. I think the whole to. thing was hard for them too, you know, and I've had, I've had years of therapy. I'm a big therapy advocate. Um, and some of it, I'm really, really proud of all the growth that I've made, but there's also, you know, we're always, we're humans. We're going to continue to be learning. And like, sometimes those lessons continue to pop up until you really learn them. Right. Yeah. Um, and one of the great things to come out of therapy. And I think for anyone, as you get older is to see your parents as human beings, right. Mm -hmm. um, with their own, you know, limitations systems and struggles and mm -hmm. flaws and whatever it is. Um, I feel really blessed to have the parents that I have, you know, however, I don't think just like the kid isn't ready for the business. I don't think there's a way to prepare a parent to know how to parent a kid through the business, if that makes sense. Unless they're a parent who's been through it and then healed. And let me tell you, 99% right. of the time that person's not going to put their kid. Yeah. In. But I look at folks like, um, what's his name? Uh, the guy from This Is 40. And why I'm not, I'm not, I'm so not Hollywood these days. I don't know names and shit. Uh, you know, the guy, Paul the funny Rudd? guy. No, who produced, who directed that? Judd Apatow. Yeah. Yeah. The Apatow girl. Paul Rudd, my love. I know. Yeah. He's so lovable. <laughs> my number one crush. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Always? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Okay. Got yeah. It. 
Yeah, he was cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, ever since Clueless. I mean, the man doesn't age. Have you seen his son too? Uh, his son yeah, it looks just like him. It talks just like him. Yeah. And it's like, that's bizarre. Copy paste. Yep. It's so funny. 100%. Sorry, we're going to go all over sick. the place, okay, people? <laughs> you were talking this about This is Dad actual Patel. friends talking on an actual <laughs> podcast. Actualizing. So sorry. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm very excited. I think we should have our own podcast together all the time. I'm down. All right, good. As long as we're talking about our feelings and maybe fashion, yeah. I'm in. I'm all about fashion. Fashion and feelings. Yeah, you actually, podcast. I should have mentioned, hmm. you styled me before we went on, on video here. By styling it, I judged, and that's, you, you styled. put this together, but uh, yeah. I, I mean, threw these pieces together inspired by you. Oh, thanks. We actually ended up we wearing almost similar, yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. We have a strawberry shortcake from the 80s thing going on. We totally do. <laughs> We're throwbacking it. Oh my god! To I love our it. childhoods. You said that, and I smelt it. You know what I yes, mean? <laughs> it's like the mixture of plastic and yep. and, and fake strawberry factory tears yeah, 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 yeah. of children. <laughs> Just like oh, that got dark, horrible. <laughs> Um, okay, so speaking of tears of children working. Um, sure. What else you got? I don't know. <laughs> I, I got year, I told you, years of therapy. What do but, we need? But that's really interesting because I really, okay, so this is what I observed. Mm -hmm. I really am wanting you to observe me okay. for me to observe you. <gasps> Love this. Because I trust you. Okay. Um, I trust you immensely, by the way, which is going back to what you're saying you, you jump, I jump. If you call, I'll be there because you make me feel very comfortable. I really? want to say that. Yeah. Because these things are so nervy. Like, I get very nervous. They're a little fucking weird. Yeah. And there's like a neon sign. But you're a, you're a comfort. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay. So, um, let's see. So, we were super tight. Mm -hmm. And then I think you were also tight with Margot. Right. I was not tight with Margot. Right. And then I think I started getting really busy and maybe petty. I don't know what it was. I think I got into my relationship with Sam. Uh -huh. And I think I was getting swept up by all the other shit that I had going on in my head. And also I think like things in my family life were weird. Okay. I don't know what it was, but I feel like we stopped hanging out as much. Yeah. And, and it, and it, and it was right before the end of even Stevens that happened that yeah. made me really sad. I th think what you're talking about. Please tell me. I also remember that time as maybe needing some space or perspective or on this thing that was ending. Right. And then we all kind of felt a little displaced, like, well, what's next? Where do we go? And well, and I don't think Disney was giving us like options. Right. I don't think it was like, don't worry, kids, we've got you. Like yeah. you, you can go to ABC family or like, right. we're going to, well, but the thing is that they did try to develop around you. Uh -huh. And I was really happy for you um, because you deserved that. Thank you. Because Christy. you were so talented that you didn't need to be the best friend. Like That's you needed to have sweet. your own show. So she got a pilot. Lauren got yes. a pilot called Dog with a Blog? No, Fuck it was- no, that um, wasn't it. What was it called? That's okay, but that sounds interesting. <laughs> that was a show, I what think. What is Dog with a Blog? <laughs> uh, no, I mine was called Web Girl yeah, and, then, and then Virtually Casey. Like they, the, the name changed, but yeah, that was the pilot. You had your own show for Disney. And I blocked it out. Like I totally forgot about it until- you or someone in my life, my mom, maybe someone brought it up. Like, oh yeah, you did that pilot. Dude, that was that was like, actually really huge though. I feel like if that had gone for you, it would have been, you know. That would have been life-changing, I feel. Yeah. Somewhat, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, I talked to AJ about it recently because he has that same experience with his band after Even Stevens and how it was like the him or the Jonas Brothers, right? Oh, wow. Because um, they were brothers. Yeah, right? he was in a band with his brothers. Right. And yeah. So anyway, isn't it weird? So weird. The turns life takes. It is. Um, I had a blast doing that pilot. Um, yeah. I can't, I can't believe, <laughs> sitting here as an adult person, I can't believe I was a kid and I like led a sitcom. You yeah. know what I mean? But like, you employed people, like your talent. Well, not even. Just like, how did I even handle that? I have mm -hmm. no idea. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was my theater background, you know, mm -hmm. taping in front of a live audience. That's mm -hmm. a, the, you know, I felt comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think I've said this before, but like there's something about being a kid in the business. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I was registering all of the, the, the pressure or the— You're 100% yeah, yeah. dissociative because yeah. how could you possibly— I think even now, like adults— I'm, mm -hmm. I'm almost 40, and now I think I could process what it means— to to uh, be on a set like that because I don't have to impress anyone. Right. But it's taken for fucking ever. I, I, I distinctly remember when I stopped giving a fuck. 
Good for you. When it was, was like that? six months ago. Okay. I was walking in an airport uh-huh. in a connecting flight. Yeah. Um, cause I'm cheap and I don't get like, you know, just like, fucking you're expensive. frugal, but I'm frugal. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> this one was just like, I gotta get there. Yeah. Um, and I was, I, I don't remember which airport, what it was. I think it was like Phoenix or some shit. Yeah. I don't know shit. Maybe I was doing a Comic-Con or something and I was walking and it was one of those escalators that move for you. Oh yeah. And I was holding a Starbucks cup and I distinctly remember blinking and feeling like I came to. Like I was dropped into my body, Holy finally. Shit. And I don't go to therapy, but I mean, you know, I've been sober and I think that so much of my brain has reprogrammed itself, but I yeah. certainly would like to continue therapy. Um, but this moment was very impactful for me. Mm. And I think I was going to a therapist at the time for like like EMDR, you know? Oh, it's sure. Like, I've I was, been curious about that. I haven't done it. intense. I had to stop. Yeah. My husband was like, you have to stop. You have obligations. And right. You're going to break the fuck down. Yeah, you don't need that. I know. I was like, I got two kids. I can't do yeah. this. So, but but this was amazing. I'd say you would call it a breakthrough because mm-hmm. I, I felt dropped into my body, and I was. What was hol- the thought? Like what what was going through your head? I don't care what anyone thinks about me anymore. Hmm. I literally was like, I can exist. Yeah, and that's okay. Do you think you're having control and of your own projects and developing? your self-worth outside of auditioning had anything to do or, or is it being a mom? Like what? It's all of it, right? Yeah. It's all of it. It's a symphony of self-empowerment mm-hmm. that really. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, that's a why. symphony of self-empowerment. Look, I'm a journalist now. You are. I have multiple <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, babe. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I think it's I think it's all of that that we weren't inherently you cannot process mm-hmm. as a child. You really can't. Because and I'm sure we can dissect this more and more. Mm-hmm. You pull the thread and it just keeps going. Yeah. But like basically like it comes back down to this for me. Kids in a adult working environment. Right. Like I people ask me all the time, "Hey, would you put your kids in the biz?" I'm like, "Yo, my kids are going to have a healthy relationship to the arts. Okay. They can perform if they want to perform, right? Mm-hmm. Like my daughter just started piano lessons and, oh, well. you know, now we're on her about practicing. So right. she can apply what she's learning. Conc- so many aspects. You yeah. know, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's you're learning. So it's like a skill set. But for that, it's almost like homework. It's not like, mm-hmm. you know, are you better than so-and-so down the street or anything? Sure. Or like, it's not competitive. Yeah. And so when you bring in the competitive part and then you come modify. Right. On top of the competitive. Yeah. It's it's just destroys your self worth and understanding of sure. the the self. Yeah, a lot of my work uh, in therapy had to do around self image, and I I don't I think that's a common um, theme for other kid actors, right? I was told who I was before I knew who I was. Yeah, what did uh, they tell you? Oh, uh, terrible things. <laughs> or uh, I think I'm just now really coming into my own, like mm-hmm. truly mm-hmm. Um, loving the person that I am loving my looks, like uh, a lot of the negative things that were said to me were about my looks, Mm -hmm. uh, to get a nose job, Mm -hmm. that I wasn't pretty enough to be a lead, that I would only be quirky best friend because I'm a quirky face. I hadn't heard the word quirky before. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, there it is over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you're almost, well, you're typecast, I guess. Yep. Um, And I just think that's a trip like that. You, a kid's brain can't process, this is how I see me versus how the world sees you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stephen, yeah. Anthony Lawrence. Um, yeah, I'm sure Jesus. he's got some of that. He had, they, they, yeah. people were telling him they thought he had Down syndrome. Like, they, no, 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 that kid had Down syndrome. That kid had Down syndrome. And he was like Ugh. eight years old processing Ooh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Right. And it was like he he was having a, I, you know, God love him. I'm just glad he's still with us because that's, I horrible. I think he's a survivor. I don't know his story in he and is. out, but I, I see who he is in interviews with you or uh, on, you know, when I saw him for the Even Stevens podcast, like he seems to be doing really, really well. And that makes me so happy. I mean, even my husband is protective over Steve, mm-hmm. Steven. Um, it's like weird how, you know, we were able to start doing the Even Stevens rewatch podcast. Mm-hmm which we had you on and that was fun. We talked about some glory days, which were really funny. Yeah. (laughs) We were remembering in the moment. I was going to say, what were we going to talk about? We were going to, we were talking about something before and then I was like, no, we got to talk about it in. 
Oh, oh, the the stuff that Nick Spano was saying. Yeah, Spano. Or Spano. Spano, I guess. Spano T. Yeah, so he basically said this crazy shit. Okay. If y'all want some even Stevens gossip. Maybe he's going to be like, no, don't say it on here. Keep it on Patreon. But he basically banged Megan. <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> Megan Fox. Fox, yeah. Basically banged. Basically banged as in you like. You really don't give a shit, do you? I don't really give a shit. <laughs> That's what they want. This they want me to not great. give a shit, right? You are liberated. But I feel comfortable. <laughs> no, I don't. Ba- banged is also very much a millennial thing. Yeah. I don't feel like the Gen Zers say banged enough. I don't think so. I mean, what do I know? I said uh, go into the Ritz, and I was trying <laughs> to say he's got Riz. I don't know. But we, so, but that's because we're like theater people, so we'll always have like Yiddish that will come out for sure. There's like, a there's a small the Liza Minnelli on your that face? lives like, inside of me at all times. There's you know? a there's a Barbra Streisand inside yes. you. Yes. Of yes. course. Yeah. But that's the other thing, though. When we talk about how people were talking, telling you you were quirky and stuff. Yeah. Did you ever find that you reflected on uh, on Barbara as, because you had a good relationship with her. I did, yeah. You played um, baby Barbara. I did, yeah. I and did. so did you ever f- source her confidence or her strength in that she was told those same things? Absolutely. Like, I thought she was a wonderful influence on me as a kid. Like, um, seeing her just exist uh, in rehearsals and on stage and how she carries herself as a performer and as a person was inspiring. And uh, it was a, it's a weird thing to be compared to her because she's such an icon. Mm-hmm. And then I also felt a residual pressure because at the time it was all of these Barbara fans and people in the industry going, oh, she's the next Barbara Streisand. And I'm like, I'm just trying to be the first Lauren. <laughs> like, I don't know what that Not means. Not enough. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, so, I, yeah. And so I think I also had some self-worth issues around that. Like if, if, if I don't end up as this cultural icon, I've failed. Oh, you know? shit. I but, didn't even realize that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she's wonderful. Like, yeah. Truly was a great influence. And I also appreciated the way that she treated me as a kid. You know, my first experience with a major, major celebrity could have really turned me on or off to the business, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and she was so welcoming. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, if it would have been <laughs> Bette Midler. Is she, oh, is she not nice? Not so much. Oh, I didn't know this. She's Well, I mean, she's a theater diva queen. She right, can do right. whatever she wants. She's mm-hmm. at that point. I just remember I was somewhere and she was not very uh, hospitable to yeah. those around her. Interesting. I was like, okay. I was like, but you're Bette Midler. You can yeah. fucking get away with that. Like, totally. I get it. It's okay. Maybe you're in your Bette Midler era. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to get away with it. But I prom- I'll get away with it. But I mean, I'll piss somebody off, but yeah. then I'll get the views. So fuck off. <laughs> Um, so back to Nick. So yes. he basically tells us that he meets a girl who's absolutely stunning, gorgeous. Right. And which she is. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. She's flawless. Mm-hmm. And she's 19 though. And he's like 27. Okay. I don't know. So he goes up to her at Aroma Cafe. He sits down. Of course sp- she's at Aroma. Right. Splits, yes. splits his pants. He says. Oh Lord. He's looking for a pickup line. He goes, Hey babe, like I'm, I'm hollering, but like I split my pants. Right. Not verbatim. <laughs> This and she's just so like, Nick. and she's like, cool, let's get numbers. Cause she's like aggressive. He's like, yo, she was like a dude. Like she's not just like a regular right. chick. She was like, knew what she wanted and she wanted to hang out with me. I mean, when you look like that, wouldn't you be I like know, right? that confident? I guess you'd have to just yeah. to survive. You'd yeah. have to be like, uh, I have to speak their language totally. if I'm going to be amongst them. Yeah. Look them <laughs> straight in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> with the blue eyes. Yeah. So, so basically they hung out. The, he really liked her so mm, much mm-hmm. that he didn't want to, you know, sleep with her. And so turns out that they had a, a, another end to the night that included the body shop, which is a strip club here. Oh, and, on Sunset? Yes. Yeah. And um, they had a blast, but then she was like, yeah, we're good. Like after that, she okay. was just a wild rock star from day one. And then he went uh, back to Aroma. Ten, we're talking like eight, 10 years later, something yeah. like that, right? He sees Shia and his dad on a Harley. Mm-hmm. And he comes up to Shia and he's like, yo, Shia, what's up, man? And they start talking. And he goes, so Transformers, because I think it just come out. He's like, yep, yep, Megan Fox. I heard about it, Nick. <gasps> I heard about it. And he goes, but I got farther. <laughs> Shia said that? Oh, my God. Just spilling. So Sp- Nick said this, like, not but a couple <laughs> days ago on our Patreon. And I was just Whoa. like, I was like, Nick, like, good for you, man. Like, mm-hmm. also, 
Wow. It's like conversations I didn't need to know about my brothers. Exactly. That's what I was just thinking. I was like, like that's got to be so weird for it you. It was a little bit. I mean, Nick's always had, he's always been putting on the Ritz. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's called a callback. Look it up. So you were always in the fashion, right? <laughs> yes. Like we had a lot of fun. I'm trying to remember like in my Marina Del Rey apartment, uh-huh. us getting ready for like little like events yeah. or like going, even just going to probably the like that body glitter involved oh, or t- like bronzer. A dream. I yeah. remember like dream clone from Gap being oh, big. Sure. And you remember my room had cloud comforters? Uh, it was a cloud comforter. Yes, vividly. <laughs> because that was so hip. It was so hip at the time. Like, uh, was it Clueless or, or maybe it was just Delia's, like yes. the Delia's magazine? It was definitely, I definitely purchased it, it from Delia's. It felt like your room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it was, um, it was clouds and then I had a yellow, like yellow pillows mm-hmm. and all that. God, the oh memories. God. No, but like, that's funny that you were there at such important, mm-hmm. like you really were my best friend. I oh, really. Same. Yeah. I'm sad that we lost touch, but let me tell you, I was a shit friend for like a long time. I don't see you that way. I mean, I guess I was just struggling. I think we both were. Were we? I think so. That sucks, I think man. I, yeah. But I, why did we both struggle? Uh, I don't think, well, I, you know, mental health wasn't talked about enough. Yeah, there was no roadmap. No. Yeah. And then life happens and mm-hmm. we did get other jobs. Did you go to college? And, did you? No. I went to Pierce College for a, a hot second. Pierce I, is a good school, though. I thought I was, and I was doing that, like, during even Stevens. Like, I yeah. would tape and then I would go to school at night. Um, I was studying music and American Sign Language. It's oh, like, wow. I might be an interpreter. I don't know. I was just like, I don't know. Yeah, you always had cool ideas. Though. I was also just very emo and like, yeah, I don't know. You were in your emo phase. I yeah. think I'd, and <laughs> I feel like you were kind of that Zoe Deschanel vibe for a bit. Oh, twee. I'll take there it. There was a twee vibe. Yeah. Before twee was a thing. I'll take it. Yeah, I know. I, were- I was like wore vintage and had my little, I played the ukulele. I could see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, no, I get uh, it. Now. No, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but I mean, yeah, you were twee before twee. But that that makes sense to me because you're into specifically thrift and vintage clothing. Oh yeah, you're styling now, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's like one of your one of your main jobs, right? One of my passions. Yeah, one like I'm, st- I'm still acting, yeah. um, and I'm styling, and it's been great because I feel creatively fulfilled in both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, styling allows me the flexibility to be a full-time auditioning actor. You know how that yeah, goes? Yeah. Um, and you're married. I'm married. I'm a stepmom. Awesome stepmom. I've got a dog. Not an evil stepmom. No, I'm, I I think I'm a pretty good stepmom. I do too. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not an easy path at times, mm-hmm. but it's a great, it's probably one of the most challenging and fulfilling uh, relationships I have. That's awesome. And I think that is being a mom. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's hard stepping in. I think we've yeah. we've talked about this briefly mm-hmm. in in stepping into that, but yeah. like, how was that for you? Um, did you get triggered at all by like the self worth stuff that like from your childhood? Did it you come know, back it's, up? Yes, because if we want to talk about playing a role or um, finding my role in this, mm-hmm. like, yeah, it brings up a lot of that. Um, because the reality is, as a stepmom, my role is ever changing. It's it's mom, it's big sister, it's cool best friend, Auntie. it's mom again. Yeah. It's it's like you know, yeah. Um, and all I can do is try to be a safe space for this kid and focus on my relationship with him, you know, and forget about all the other extra stuff that comes along with co-parenting and all of these right. wonderful things right. of a blended family. Right. Of course. Um, yeah. Well, and also too, it's like. <sighs> Kids pick up on so much. You never know what what where they're going to get their role modeling from. Right. I would imagine, especially in a blended family. Mm-hmm. But uh, first of all, I think they're definitely lucky to have you because you've done work on yourself, right? Like you're not adding extra baggage to this child's life. I'm trying not to. I know you're like, <laughs> let me just like, stand back. Yeah, but really though, it's like when you're doing the work on yourself. That's that's really the best thing you could show a child. I hope so. Yeah, because like I you agree. said, mental health wasn't talked about, so our parents right. weren't. They weren't doing work on themselves. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't have any role models right. for mental health, like coping mechanisms, yeah. really. Well, and that's a it's a beautiful thing about being a step parent, I think, is is the stepping in and is the, being the safe space that is like kind of, um, you know, neutral ground. Because mm-hmm. I think he can be with me and talk to me about certain things that he might not feel comfortable sharing with his, you know, uh, birth parents, blood right. parents. So it's right. it's different. So you're almost like advocating 
for. I try to, yeah. So that's got to be pretty healing in some ways then. I never thought about it that way, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'll send you my bill. Okay, great. Thank you. (laughs) Therapist Christy. Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm a journalist. Yeah, you really are. What is it? (laughs) Something Symphony? Oh, 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 no, I don't. It's gone. It's, it was so impactful. I don't remember. I don't either. Anymore. I don't either. It happened and it exploded like a supernova. <laughs> Do you sing still? Every now and then, yeah. I'd like to find a way back to me, you know? Like mm-hmm. I sing for myself. I sometimes sing with my husband. He's a songwriter, so that's, oh, yeah. fun. Um, that's fun. And the yeah. ukulele, which is also ukulele. Yeah. Uh, oh. Did you know this? Excuse me. No, I didn't. It's called ukulele. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See? You can't say it any other way. It has to be okay. the ukulele. I feel funny saying it that way. <laughs> I feel like it's your colonizer. Don't say it that yeah, way. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's not mine to say. <laughs> <laughs> word. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. I, I wish I sang more too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you were on Broadway. Yeah. I guess afterwards, you know. Yeah. That happened. But I also had a pretty rough go with that. So like I had nodules, double nodules. You did. Was I this had. for Beauty and the Beast? Yeah. Wow. So right before, I didn't book Beauty and the Beast. Okay. I, I had double nodules and I couldn't squeak out any of the falsetto stuff. Okay. I was a belter, which yeah. ruined my voice. Yeah. And I wasn't obviously belting properly as our mm-hmm. Annie. You know, we did. Did you do Annie? I thought oh, you God. did. Of right? course I did. I thought so. Every little girl did Annie. Yeah. That had was your to. entry. That was your gateway right drug. Right uh-huh. To being a performer. But so when I did it, I did it, uh, and I I think it was like that type of singing. And, oh, look how I can be the loudest belter in the room and book this. Um, So I just never learned how to sing properly. And then it was almost too late Mm. by the point at which all these other girls that were booking that age of roles, even though I was on the younger side of Mm -hmm. Belle, Belle, they had all this technique and stuff like that, right? Right. So I had to catch up really quickly. Yeah. And I was, I you know, I went to Joan Later, who was this really amazing voice coach in at New York. Mm-hmm. But I had had surgery a month before my second tryout. Oh, so wow. I wasn't even supposed to try out or use my voice for about six months to a year, right? Like after you have double yeah, nodules. Yeah, how surgery. scary, yeah. So I sang anyway mm-hmm. on steroids, booked it. You're like, I'm going to make it work. It was like no, because I left uh, Columbia. I was like in a really bad place. Okay. Um, Like uh, all of the time that I want was like fighting to go to the best college or whatever mm-hmm. that my mom was like, you got to go to the best college you get into. You, I remember you studying so hard. Really? Yeah. It was like, not easy. We would, we would be working, we'd be shooting mm-hmm. and you would, you know, do a scene and the minute it was cut, you were back in your dressing room and hitting the books. Really? Yeah. See, yeah. I just remember going home and having to have new tutors every day for a different uh, subject. Mm-hmm. So it was like I never got time off outside of trying to plot for like my SATs and mm-hmm. like stuff like that. So, but I was not a good student. I was really? truly not. I, I think that I was like a B plus student at best. And because of these extracurriculars, AKA yeah. the fame or whatever, I think that, uh, you know, Barnard let me in and. Mm-hmm. Uh, we knew somebody too that was on the board and stuff mm-hmm. like that, which was very rare because my family was, sure. you know, connected. So I, I squeaked in to mm-hmm. the Ivy League for sure, and then staying in when you're at a school like that where everyone is so it, it almost seems like it comes so easy to everyone else. Yeah, it was uh, highly competitive. Mm-hmm. Had never been in a normal social environment like that. Yeah, that that must have been a culture shock. It was all around <laughs> really nuts. Yeah, it was really nuts. I, and I also remember like what you had experienced with the the um, virtually Casey pilot. Yeah. Like I had done a pilot for Fox called Boarding School and the- Oh, the, yeah. Do you remember that? I remember the name. Yeah. It yeah. was a big one that a it's lot a of people deal. wanted to book. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, it was supposed to be the facts of life, but it was from some of the makers of Friends. Totally. So it was like, it was like girls- they gave us push-up bras and schoolgirl skirts, and Ooh. they were like, "Yeah, I was like, what could go wrong? We're gonna go, we're gonna get, do this, right?" Speaking of facts of life, you know that yeah. Mindy played my mom in Virtually Casey. I think I do remember yeah. that. Sorry, no Continue. worries. Yeah. Um. So it was like, okay, this is going, and if it doesn't go, then I guess I'll go to college. Mm. But the the director was like, Christy, what are you doing? You can't go to college. You're gonna ruin your career. That's kind of why I didn't go. I mean, well, the 
Sort of. Right. Um, no, no, everyone didn't go. Yeah. It was like it was not the, the thing to the do. The school of thought was like, oh, you're already doing what you wanted it what you want to do in life. So Back. just keep going. But do you um, know how bad that is though, to like not give kids options of uh, like like in Jeanette's book, I'll say again, she says, like, I never went to college uh-huh. because I just didn't think I needed to. I didn't have the time. So now I have no way of making an income. Right. Well, I've had to be very scrappy, you know, and it's mm-hmm. something I'm very proud of. Mm-hmm. I've, I, and, and similar to acting, I've had to put myself out there over and over again <laughs> um, and upsell myself in order to get good jobs and all of that. Um, all because of the college stuff? I think so. Really? I, I think it's changing now. But, you know, when we were like hitting the job market, mm-hmm. it was like uh, you had to have a, a college degree for certain things. So Interesting. Um, I, I guess that's a way of filtering people out. But yeah. Like, yeah. But your skill set is very unique and, mm. and, and very specialized. Very special. Which is good and bad, right? I um, guess, right. Yeah. It yeah. Is. It is. I, I learned that the hard way in quarantine and all that when, and I think a lot of people did. I was like, what am I trying to do? Mm-hmm. Tell silly stories and, and wear silly clothes and dress people. And the world is ending, Long you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like, what, yeah. It, what, it, what is what I do matter in the grand scheme of things. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my creativity and where it's taken me, you know? Well, if it means anything, you are still just as beautiful, oh. talented, and like, I am just as like enthralled by you genuinely as I always was like genuinely. I've always thought the best of you, which is why I'm like, shit, I wish I could get some time back. Mm -hmm. But there's, we we can't go back. No, we can't. You're going to make me cry. Here's the thing. (laughs) Here's the thing. I have nothing but love for you always. And I'm actually really okay with where we're at. I feel like Mm -hmm. friendships and relationships ebb and flow. And there's a reason, there's a reason you're in my life again now, I feel. And mm-hmm. if we would have even to tried to do this yeah, uh, earlier, well, I don't know how, that what I What would we have said, right? Like you can't yeah. work through it if it's not. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. We're going to have fun. Yeah. Let's have fun. Okay. Let's go do something fun soon. Yeah. What do you like to do for fun, Christy? <laughs> I don't drink I mean, anymore. So yeah, exactly. So it's very different. We can. I like shopping. Let's we were go going to shopping. Yeah. I like yeah. shopping. Okay. I'll show you all my spots. Okay. Okay. We I like caffeine. Great. I like to eat a lot. Same. Okay, great. Let's okay. go eat. But where can people find you? Because I know you started TikTok now. I am. I'm a, I'm a baby TikToker, but mm-hmm. I'm so there. So please go support Lauren. Yeah. It's uh, my TikTok is Lauren Frost. Okay. Like Lauren Frost talk. But Instagram oh, that's is cool. just my name, Lauren Frost. But follow yeah, her. I'm, Are you on Cameo? I'm not on Cameo. Let's get you on Cameo. Really? Yeah. Okay. I got the, you know, I'm quite, I'm enjoying TikTok. It's fun. It is. It's like, speaking of being vulnerable, it's like a place to be authentic. And I really enjoy that within social media. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you, you deserve all good things. Damn it. Thank you. So do you. Okay. Strawberry fields forever. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Vulnerable Podcast. For clips of this episode, go ahead and check out the Podco YouTube channel. Links in the description.